Geese may look like cuddly, awkward birds, but for those of you who have never had the displeasure of ticking off one of these hulking beasts of the bird kingdom, you have no idea what terror they can bring. Tonight's creepypasta was inspired by some rather vicious birds near a place I used to work out here in the Midwest. So settle in for tonight's addition to Wicked Wednesdays. Now gather round and listen well to Why I'm Terrified of Geese. Geese are the most terrifying thing on this whole planet. There's something about a creature that looks like a football with feathers and a few sticks of a head and legs that is entirely unsettling to me. Sure, they look awkward when they're just waddling about off in the distance, but let one of those feathered demons get within five feet of you, and it's game over. Maybe it's because I grew up on a farm and got used to having the dickens pecked out of me when I got too close to their nest. The beak of an angry mother goose battering away at my seven-year-old defenseless body felt comparable to what I'd imagine an angry construction worker with a ball-peen hammer might. On top of that, if they actually manage to get a grip on you, they can pinch a mighty welt. I had bruises for weeks after one got a hold of me, upon my twisting my ankle during my escape from it. Thankfully, my older sister was close by enough that she was able to stop its frenzied assault with a few warning swings of a fallen tree branch. Perhaps that's why I started hating them. So, when I started working for Mueller's Fine Jewelry, my co-workers would laugh at me for running to work the moment I stepped out of my car. If the commission bonus hadn't been so high, I might have skipped over the job entirely. However, since my former business had been sold after the owners decided to retire, I needed to find a new job. Ed Mueller actually was a good friend of my former bosses, as shown by the gleaming gold signet ring he commissioned them to make so many years ago. So they more than put in a good word for me. By the time the doors were closed at the place I had worked throughout my late adolescence and early adulthood years, old man Mueller was practically waiting for me with open arms. After all, I had been the top salesman at Franklin Jewelers, so it was to our mutual benefit that he took me onto his team. The store itself was fairly new since Ed had decided to relocate. He'd been used to the little store he'd owned for many years, but the complex it was built in began to get more and more run down as the area around itself industrialized. So, he decided that it would be best to move to a better location after the windows of his store had been smashed in for the third time in three months. Thankfully, the move brought with it a much bigger store for an expanded stock and a far ritzier location. All Ed loved to boast about how he got such a prime location for practically a steal, but I suspected for the longest time that he was lying. Getting a location like that had to have cost an arm and a leg, plus more luck than most people had in their entire lives. Though, I often wondered if it had something to do with the geese. I'd never seen geese as bloodthirsty as these in my entire life. My first day on the job, I encountered one as I was returning to my vehicle. It had been curled up, its head tucked tightly against its back to the point it almost looked as if it had been decapitated. Given my distrust of said creatures, it would have been far less of a tragedy for me to run upon than most people. However... Once I got within a few yards of the wretched beast, its head sprung to life like a clown escaping a jack-in-the-box and turned its beady eyes upon me. I stopped in my tracks as I realized I had nothing on me with which to defend myself, even if I had been allowed to. After all, the city had some very strict laws regarding the treatment of geese as they were a sort of natural trademark of the area so harming one would land you with a hefty fine. 
I tried to still my beating heart as the fiendish fowl uprighted itself, wings only partially extended, and hissed, hissed at me, as if it were not a bird but an angry cat that had its sights set upon me. As I began to slowly maneuver around it, it began to stalk toward me, slowly at first, plopping one webbed foot down at a time to mirror my own cautious steps. The more steps I took, the more it did. I sped up slightly, and its fat body waddled out from the grass, its head low and slightly snaking side to side, as if eyeing what part of my person it should attack first. Finally, the hulking brute of a bird let out a loud rasp of a hiss that ended in more of a growl than a honk, and threw its wings out to their full extent, and the childhood terror that had been slowly welling up inside of me snapped and sent me running like a scared little boy off into the shopping center. As a few of the shops were closed on Sundays, I had no choice but to cut down an alley in hopes that I might be able to reach the doors of one of the still active businesses before the creature reached me. As I sprinted down between the tall brick walls of various buildings, the beating of wings and the menacing, raspy honking echoed, reverberating in such a way as to make it seem like the auditory assault was coming from all directions. I cut the corner sharply at the end, narrowly saving myself from a hellish pecking as the goose, incensed as it was, was still a goose, and therefore could not maneuver its awkward body as nimbly as my own. It flew out into the street, honking angrily at having realized my trick, and only narrowly avoided slamming into the side of a passing car. I heard it turn its rage momentarily upon the vehicle, giving me just enough time to duck into a restaurant before it could finish its pursuit. People who had been milling about outside scattered quickly as they realized why I had been running, but the bird did not give chase to them. Instead, as I pulled the heavy glass door behind me, it paused, landing just in front of the door. For several moments, I stood there, panting, watching it. After another wretched hiss, it quirked its snake-like head around a few times, before calmly tucking its wings against its body and righting itself. I swear, the horrible thing actually nodded at me. Nodded! As if it were an honorable gentleman and I had won the malicious game it had been playing with me. And then... As quickly as its violent pursuit had begun, it ended, and the bird became the docile, homely creature any goose appeared to be at a distance, and gently toddled off to make trouble with someone else. I did not trust that it had truly left instead of just slipping around the corner out of sight, so I decided I would stay inside for a few moments. As I stood there, watching it go, I heard a voice from behind me say, They're vicious, aren't they? I turned and saw a young woman, outfitted as a server, and still trying to calm my racing heart and breath, I nodded in agreement. She smiled softly. You're right to stay in here for a bit. Those birds are clever. I've been attacked by them more than once myself. At that point... My stomach decided there was no longer enough of a threat to remain silent, and loudly reminded me that I had forgotten breakfast that day and had long since skipped lunch. I pardoned myself, but the waitress just themed at me. The best thing to feel better after a wild sprint like that's a good meal. I agreed, and she led me to a seat. As she handed me a menu, I glanced at her name tag and saw the name Sarah emblazoned across the little black placard in gold letters, and then noticed the warm and cozy decor of the rest of the restaurant. I hadn't paid much attention to what building I had taken cover inside, but now I realized that it was an Italian eatery. Now I knew why I could smell such lovely, savory scents when I walked past this part of the plaza. 
At mid-afternoon, there were few patrons inside, so I chalked being driven into such a lovely place at such a quiet time to be the silver lining of my encounter with a goose. I glanced at the menu as Sarah, having sensed my unfamiliarity with the restaurant, began listing off their available beverages. After a quick perusal of the dishes, I found it difficult to decide upon which one I should try, so I asked Sarah her thoughts. Oh, the chicken alfredo for sure, she said. As she leaned closer to point it out on the menu, she whispered, It's no goose but I like to imagine eating one of their relatives is a little payback whenever they've given me a good nipping. I was taken aback by the other bloodlust of her words, and then found myself sharing in her malicious glee. Returning her grin, I nodded in agreement and returned the menu, earning a wink from Sarah before she sauntered off to give my order to the kitchen. Sarah, as I found, could not have been more right. The Alfredo was delicious, and I found every tender morsel of chicken to be an imagined taste of vengeance against my foul foe. While I was enjoying my meal, I saw a goose waddle its way out of an alley across the street. Petty as it may have been, when the goose turned my way, I found myself chuckling with childless glee as I slowly took a deliberate bite into the piece of sauce-drenched chicken. The goose just stood there, staring toward the restaurant I was in, as if it were watching me. While it could not possibly have known what I was doing, I speared another piece of meat with my fork and waved it a bit while looking deliberately at the bird, taunting it. The act exhilarated me in a way nothing had before. I was mocking my greatest fear, and there was not a thing it could do about it. Of course, I was also doing this with the knowledge that, no matter how vitriolic these monsters of avian kind were, they were also just stupid, empty-headed birds with no thoughts beyond eating, excreting, and providing new generations to harass helpless passers-by. The concept of vengeance was far out of reach of their inferior animal minds. Days passed, and I found myself having worked at Mueller's for several months. The location brought with it a larger, richer clientele, whose pocketbooks and wallets were far looser when it came to the shiny baubles I sold. I soon became far more successful than I had ever been at my old store, and Ed Mueller could not have been happier with the revenue and happy clientele that I was bringing in. In addition, I found Sarah to be even more delightful than I deduced from our initial meeting, and soon found a steady romance budding between us. Life was good. One day, I arrived at the store to find it locked. Strange, I thought, as despite Ed's age, the old man was often at work before the rest of us. Still, there were times that he ran a bit behind, so he had granted a few of us spare keys in just such a situation. So, I was able to enter and begin work without any problems. A few hours went by, and the rest of my co-workers trickled in as usual, but there was still no sign of Ed. The hours ticked on, leaving us all puzzled as to what could be keeping our employer. None of my seniors had ever known Ed to be so late to his own store before, and we were all concerned that he might have come down with some sort of illness. Such a thing was hard to imagine, because Ed was just as hearty and healthy as he had been when I first met him a decade prior. On the very day, he came to retrieve his precious signet ring from Franklin Jewelers. I rang his home, but received no answer. I would have rung his neighbors to go and check in on him, but unfortunately, I was unfamiliar with anyone else that lived in his community. For the rest of my shift, it felt like an ominous cloud had settled upon us, until finally, I gave up on ringing Ed and decided I would go and check up on him personally. 
after calling Sarah to explain why I might be late to our outing that evening. I ended my shift early and headed off to my car. Not long after my encounter with that one wretched goose months earlier, I had learned from Sarah that they had a tendency to rest beneath a few shade trees near where it had first attacked me. After seeing for myself that same goose and its friends tended to congregate in that area most of the day, I tended to avoid the place until the sun went down and they had relocated. However, the route on which they rested was the shortest to reach the lot where my car was parked, and with my mind filled with worry for my aged employer, I was upon those demonic waterfowl before I even realized my mistake. By the time I remembered why I normally avoided that path during the daylight hours, I realized that there were a multitude of those feathered brutes dozing in the shadows on each side of me, with one exception. A single, oblong mass of down and hatred resting in the dead center of the sidewalk. Given my fear, I normally would have turned and taken another path, one far less likely to result in my being pecked and pinched enough to look as though I had a bizarre strand of the measles. But ever since I took Sarah's advice to make myself feel better, I found my terror around geese slowly decreasing. While I still gave them a wide berth, it was slowly becoming more of a healthy dose of caution rather than pure, unadulterated horror. I stopped walking, to face down the solitary goose in my way. It rose from the ground, its beady eyes focused upon me, its black beak glistening in the sunlight as if it had just finished having a drink in some nearby pool. Slowly, one by one, the black necks of the other fowl drifted upward at the rising of their compatriot. The lone goose began to waddle forward, its wings only slightly raised so that it looked hunched over, as if hatching a menacing plan inside its mind. Not today, I told myself. I had an important task to see through, and no football with feathers was going to get in my way. The other geese watched silently as we began our pitched battle of the sidewalk. As it stepped forward, I stepped forward. The closer it came, the closer I came to it. Finally, it was about a few yards away from me, and I readied myself to sprint past it. It stopped and began to honk at me, no, not honk, but hack. It almost sounded as though it were laughing, if a goose could laugh. For nearly a full minute, it made muffled, hissing, honking noises, as if someone were playing with a child's bicycle horn that was on its last squeak. Finally, the goose threw its head back and, slinging its neck around like a whip, released whatever it was that had been lodged in its throat, sending the small object skidding across the concrete to stop at my feet. What my eyes landed upon nearly made my heart stop. There, gleaming up at me, was a glimmering golden ring emblazoned with a very familiar M, and covered in a gooey, liquidy mess. My eyes followed the trail the ring left back to the bird, and I realized it was not water dripping from its horrid beak, but the shiny crimson of blood. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this creepypasta. If you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can catch your latest spooky fix the moment it comes out. And if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash phantasmal poppy. Good night.
and see you all real soon.